Hello and welcome to Mjolnir at the Movies Intermission. This is another little intermission episode as I am here on my own as Neil has gone off yet again on holiday. He has more holidays than anyone in the world, I think. But he will be back soon and uh, we will be looking at uh, Oliver Twist next time. But for now, appropriately, as I'm here on my own, I'm going to have a quick look at the latest Star Wars film, which is Solo. And, well, it lived up to my expectations, really, because it was one of the most lacklustre action sci-fi films that I've ever seen, I think. I was completely underwhelmed by it all. It was unengaging. Now, I'll, I'll start with the positives, really. I'll start with the uh, the fact that uh, the lead actor, Alden Ehrenreich, I've just looked him up, <laughs> uh, he made a pretty good Han Solo, to be honest, uh, Han Solo as he would have been in his younger day. Uh, I think that uh, he did rather well, considering the terrible script. Uh, Woody Harrelson equally did as well as he could have done. And... The rest of the characters, Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian, it wasn't too bad, I suppose. Amelia Clark was unengaging, and the rest of the support, well, they were sort of lackluster, really. But they couldn't have done very well in any case, because they were served up such a terrible script. Uh, with uh, with such a preposterous plot, and it made for really for not having any depth to the characters. There, there was no pro progression to the characters. Really, I noted, and there were there was no reason for the character bonding either. So, for example. Uh, the Woody Har Harris, uh, oh, oh, Woody Harrelson character, Tobias Beckett, uh, and uh, Han Solo. What was the reason for their bonding exactly? Because uh, uh, Beckett left Han Solo behind in the beginning. There seemed to be no reason to for for any bond between the two, uh, and that of course uh, proved to be the case in the end because uh, Han Solo kills Beckett, of course. But that means that throughout the film, the, the, that everything is false and there's there's no particular engagement between the viewer and the characters. Uh, because uh, I, either you're going to play it that there is a genuine bond there, or you're not. And if you're not, then there's no engagement between the audience and the characters. So you're pretty snookered uh, by your own plot. Now the other the other problem was uh, the bond between Chewbacca and Han Solo. Now, in the original trilogy, uh, it sort of implied that uh, that there is a bond between Chewbacca and Han Solo because Chewbacca has this debt of gratitude to Han Solo. Uh, but was that the case? Was that borne out in this film? It wasn't really. There was the bit where Chewbacca goes off and saves uh, his fellow Wookiees and everything, but Han Solo didn't really join him. Uh, so there was a missed opportunity there to explore that and to uh, explore the bonds of friendship that grew from that. And uh, it's sort of um, f a forced narrative now, if you like, uh, about... Uh, this sort of friendship between Chewbacca and Han Solo, there, there's, uh, it, it went from being where they escaped from the pit, uh, to this little prison kind of thing, and Han Solo helped Chewbacca, but, but Chewbacca didn't seem particularly grateful, and then for some reason uh, he was all suddenly, for no apparent reason, friendly with him. Uh, I didn't see the I didn't see the connections, and, and that was the case uh, a lot of the time. I, I didn't see the connection between uh, Kira, this uh, uh, love interest, 
of Hans Solos, uh, played by Amelia Clark. I didn't see the the connection there either. There, there, there was obviously a certain romance, but, but that again was proven to be false in the end. So everything was proven to be false, and, and all these uh, relationships and bonds all proved to be completely futile and based upon falsehoods. And that goes really against the whole spirit of Star Wars. In the original trilogy, what you had was the these disparate people coming together through necessity to form a bond and a unit, uh, despite their differences and d despite uh, their complete character differences. Uh, and this this generated tension that is the source of drama and this is completely lacking here uh, people don't seem to have the uh, the wherewithal to realize this and 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 the strange thing is that the script for this film was was written by Lawrence Kasdan and and his son Jonathan Kasdan and of course Lawrence Kasdan was partly responsible for Return of the Jedi, but um, equally so was George Lucas, and and I think that um, what we see here is the lack of Lucas and the ascension of of Kazdan, and it's interesting actually because Kazdan was always wanting in the original trilogy to kill characters off. His idea. Uh, was actually to kill off Luke Skywalker at some point and then have uh, Leia take over. And so again you can see the beginning of the SJW narrative there uh, and the precursor, if you like, to Rey in the new Star Wars. Uh, this uh, female super-powered uh, Mary Sue character and he pretty much wanted to do that with Leia, uh, but uh, but George Lucas stopped him. And Kazdan's idea it was that basically you have to kill off characters to keep the audience engaged. And and Lucas said no. He said this is fairy tale. Everybody gets out uh, alive in the end, and you have a happy ending. And Lucas proved to be correct, uh, because the audience, of course, loved the original Star Warses. And this film has absolutely flopped. Now, I predicted that this would happen when we looked at The Last Jedi, when we did the podcast on The Last Jedi, if you uh, look at that. And, and I said that that would probably affect this film, the... Um, that there would be a reaction against Star Wars based on The Last Jedi, and I think that that's proven to be the case. Although, this film cannot stand on its own two feet either, and in fact is... It's, is it as bad as The Last Jedi? In one sense it is, in another sense it isn't. Uh, the SJW narratives in this film have been pushed back a little bit. They've uh, they've not gone whole hog as they did with The Last Jedi, and that was obviously because uh, of the audience reaction and the fear now that uh, Kathleen Kennedy, the head of Lucasfilm, has of losing her job. In fact, she has been reported to have been brought into the boardroom and... Uh, by um, Iger, isn't it, the uh, the guy who controls Disney, uh, also a Jewish character, uh, guy, uh, as is Kazdan, and, but she, uh, but, but Iger basically is, you know, he, he has to turn a profit at the end of the day, and so he's come down on Kathleen Kennedy, and Kathleen Kennedy will have to cut back on the SJW narratives because people simply don't want it. They're, they're fed up of this. And they will have to go back to traditional uh, cinema uh, to an extent and to traditional themes, motifs, characters and so on to draw back the audience, if that is possible. 
because I don't think that Star Wars is ever going to recover from this. I don't think it can. Uh, I mean, the, the budget for this film is reported to have been at $275 million. Now, when you calculate for advertising and so on, the film will have to make about $600 million uh, to break even, and it's made $369 million so far. It is going to turn a huge loss, uh, probably around $100 million. Uh, the merchandising, that is also down. People are not buying Star Wars products anymore. People are tired of Star Wars. And it is all because of the stupidity of Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, it is uh, right there, from right from the start when she started wearing those little t-shirts with the forces female. People, uh, it's, it's almost like, ironically, um, a sort of a uh, parallel in the uh, in solo because you have a slave revolt and here you have an audience revolt and this is you know this is what's happened uh, people have uh, have broken free of the bonds that have kept them in the cinemas uh, because they've um, unlike with real slaves who have physical bonds uh, with cinema often you have mental bonds especially in something like Star Wars, because Star Wars has been a part of people's lives since it first came onto the screen in, uh, when was it, 77, I think. And so 40 years of Star Wars we've, we've had, and it has become an intrinsic part of the culture. Now, of course, Kathleen Kennedy's idea was, was to subvert that culture. Uh, to subvert it through the narrative of Star Wars. And this has backfired terribly. People have uh, have realized that, well, actually, they're free and they can, they can walk out of the cinema theaters. And so that's uh, precisely what has happened. Now, um, in the future, in, uh, because we're, of course, looking towards episode 9 which will be directed by J.J. Abram and it's obvious that Kathleen Kennedy thinks that J.J. Abram can fix this uh, he directed episode 7 but that's where things started going wrong he's not going to be able to fix this and of course Ryan Johnson has left him quite a few snookers on because he's killed off uh, Luke Skywalker now the only way to bring him back, of course, is as a force ghost. Uh, is Mark Hamill contracted for another film? Because I don't think he will want to reprise his role if it has any continuation with what happened in The Last Jedi. Uh, Mark Hamill, of course, has been very vocal in, as much as he can, of course, uh, he's been very vocal in uh, in interviews as to letting his feelings known about what happened to his character uh, because he very much cared about uh, his character Luke Skywalker because he thought that it was a good role model for kids growing up and, and, I, and I think that there, that there are aspects of Luke Skywalker that are very good uh, you know the, the heroism the wanting to do the right thing and so on and of course uh, Ryan Johnson deconstructed all those things so uh, unless um, unless he comes back as a force ghost and Mark Hamill agrees then Luke Skywalker is no more equally uh, I think that the idea for episode 9 would have been to continue with Princess Leia's story, but of course Carrie Fisher's died since then, so that's another snooker that they have. And of course, uh, Han Solo was killed off in episode uh, 7, which was directed by J.J. Abrams. So, uh, none of those major characters can really come back, apart from maybe Luke Skywalker. 
uh, and nobody gives a shit about the new characters because they are so bland they are so unrealistic they are so antipathetic uh, and so alienating and so Star Wars is doomed essentially the only way to make Star Wars a success is actually to go back and to do some of these in-between stories like they'd planned to do an Obi-Wan Kenobi story uh, so you know a Star Wars story as they call them so Obi-Wan a Star Wars story as they were going to throw in there uh, they made the Solo and Solo one instead and the problem with and, and I'll come back now to the Solo story the big problem is the lack of what makes Star Wars Star Wars what makes Star Wars Star Wars is the whole narrative about the Force and about Jedi Knights and so on now you had a little cameo uh, with Darth Maul there who was uh, on the uh, holographic projection but why do that why why not have Darth Maul as the main villain that that would have you know that is obvious it is obvious to someone like me who grew up with Star Wars and, and, and I was a Star Wars fan when I was a child and so on uh, because uh, most people were uh, you know it's, a, it's hard to imagine how big a uh, an effect it had on the culture and why throw in this character this Paul Bettany character this Dryden Voss and you'll know it is of course that, that Voss is a South African name which goes in with all this uh, sort of uh, uh, slave narrative and so on uh, but but why have him there anyway why not have Darth Maul that's the uh, obvious uh, villain to have so that's really all there is to say about Solo a Star Wars story because there's nothing really to it there's nothing much to say in terms of the development the where it fits into the cinematic universe of Star Wars it's really to me just a throwaway sci-fi action film and will soon be forgotten in fact I've forgotten many of the scenes already well that's all for, from me for now and I'll see you next time uh, hopefully with Neil bye for now